Amen. All right. Uh, we'll start out reading here in uh, Revelation, if you will, Revelation 17. And then we'll go to uh, Zechariah chapter 5. Let's look at a few things. Now, y'all going to have to have an open mind tonight. <laughs> and some's already open, right? <laughs> some stays open. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> Amen. Uh, so we're all on common ground then, I guess. But uh, Revelation chapter 17, we, we've been studying on this thing a little bit about beauty and the beast and uh, see some things here. Um, and um, I, I will say this, I, we, we, a couple of Sunday nights ago when we did not get to finish the thing about uh, 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 Babylon, the city, and the connection with Jezebel, we didn't get to finish that. Um, so I, I'll give you the last point real quick. And I'll just give you where it tells us in Revelation. Y'all know the story of uh, Jezebel, how that uh, uh, Jeroboam, I think it was, that went up there and, and uh, went into the place and called for them to throw her down, right? Well, if you look just a page over in, in Revelation 18, uh, that's what's going to happen to Babylon, the city, the, the final... Um, if you wanted to read that thing about Jezebel, that thing's in 2 Kings over there in chapter 9. And uh, you can read that thing about how she got thrown down and was not found anymore there in, in, in uh, 2 Kings 9, 33 through 37. But uh, uh, here we find the same thing. Notice in verse 20, 18, 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying, Thus with violence shall thy, thy great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more. See that thing? Jezebel, that's what that's talking about. Uh, that, uh, that thing of uh, uh, Babylon being destroyed and thrown down and being found no more. Well, when that thing happened to Jezebel, the Bible says that she got thrown out of that window and the dogs come and ate her up and they couldn't find her no more. <laughs> And it's the same thing. So you get those connections there, which is, which is pretty neat. And uh, you'll find those things uh, in your Bible like that all the time. Let me get this for you, Grace. <clears throat> Here you go, sweetie. There you go. If y'all going to throw stuff at me, make it money or something. Don't be... <laughs> I know it's a weak throw. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you see how those things are connected, and we're going to look at that again tonight. You know, uh, there's types all in your Bible, right? I mean, there's types all through your Bible. And, and uh, you know, some people want to say that it, it may be a stretch or, or something, but, uh, but you know, I, I, just, I just look at the Bible for what it is. And, and we see some of these things, and, uh, and uh, I, I'll give you some things tonight that you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna kind of flip a little bit over it, but uh, that's okay. That's all right. There's, there's, there's some uh, lesser things you flipped over, so <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll just look at it. You know, it's like, it's like uh, Mary, Mary in your Bible, of course, that was the mother of the, of the child Jesus. You know, uh, she spoke there in Luke chapter 1 about how that she needed a Savior, and, uh, and she did. She was just like anybody else, just like the Pope over here needs a Savior. You know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't accept Jesus as his Savior, he's going to go to hell. I mean, that's just the bottom line. And uh, so Mary <clears throat> knew she needed a Savior. She rejoiced in God, uh, it said, her Savior. And, uh, and so not only that, but you get, uh, you get there's a type of Mary uh, later, earlier in... in, in uh, First Samuel over there, and that is Hannah. She was a type of Mary in that she prayed for a, for a child, amen, and God gave her a, a, a man child. And uh, so he was a miracle child. She, you know, and, and so Mary, she had, she had a miracle child, of course, we know as being Jesus. Now, uh, we know that uh, even, even Hannah realized that she needed God, and she needed a Savior just like Mary needed a Savior as well. So you get types like that. And so I see this thing in Revelation chapter 17 
Then I'll read a couple of two, three verses here. And uh, it says in verse number 3, So he carried me away in the Spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names and blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Who is this woman? Well, verse 5, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, uh, and abominations of the earth. So we know who that is. Verse 18 says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. And we know that to be Babylon. And we know that to be is what we know now. As uh, verse 9 says, the city sitting on seven hills. Amen. And we've, we've determined, uh, we've determined uh, who that is and what that is. And so tonight I want to look at this thing about the connection of uh, Zechariah chapter 5 and, and this mystery Babylon. So uh, I want you to turn to uh, Zechariah and I want to look at this thing here in Zechariah chapter 5. Now Zechariah is the next to the last book of your Old Testament. Uh, if you get to Matthew, you go a couple of books back and you'll run into Zechariah. But uh, uh, Zechariah is, a, is an intriguing book. And uh, there's a lot of things in there that uh, will just blow your mind. But I want to look at this thing tonight. And uh, we, and I'm careful to say, and I'm, not trying to, and I'm not trying to bring in the headlines, and I'm not trying to bring in uh, conspiracy things or anything like that. I don't want you to think that. Y'all have heard me preach long enough that I'll, I'll say a little this or that, but I don't preach on that stuff. And I'm not really preaching on it tonight. I just want to show you what the Bible shows us about some of the current events that's going on in our world today, that they had no idea back then, when this book was written, that these men, used by God, uh, of what we were uh, going to be facing. And in the headlines here in the last couple of weeks is all these uh, flying objects being shot down. Amen? And all this stuff going on, and you hear the stories about how that these things had been floating around and flying around for years. And they just, uh, they just uh, you know, hadn't told anybody about it, you know? That's like, uh, y'all know who the greatest uh, hide-and-seek uh, uh, character is, don't you? It's Bigfoot. <laughs> nobody's ever found the guy. <laughs> he's everywhere, but nobody's seen him. I mean, you know, been able to take a good picture of him. <laughs> he's, the, he's the world's champion hide-and-seek guy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Can't find him. Amen. But, but, you know, all this stuff that, that, that goes on, you know, with UFOs and all that stuff, and I... I'm not, uh, I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to bring conspiracy theories and stuff like that into this stuff, but I want us to see what the Bible says. You can draw your own conclusion, but we'll just take the Word of God and see what's going on here. So I want to see this connection in Zechariah, <clears throat> this connection in Zechariah chapter 5. Notice in verse number 1, here's what, uh, here's what this vision is that it teaches here, it shows us here. It says, Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, and I, he says uh, there, I see a flying roll. That's not a dinner roll either, by the way. <clears throat> when I was a kid, that's what I thought of. When there was, <laughs> it says bread flying through there. <laughs> but it's not talking about that, okay? <laughs> so, so he says, and I answered, I see a, a flying roll. And, and the length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. If you, if you were to go back and look at Solomon's temple, that's the same size of his porch that he built on his temple out there uh, of Solomon's place. And it says there in verse 3, Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, for every one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. So these first few verses here, I, I see this thing about how can we connect this to what's going on with uh, and, and, and this will not be as close as the rest of the message as far as the connection, but this is the beginning of the connection. Well, all right, you see this thing of a flying roll. Now, when it mentions a flying roll, it is actually speaking about what we would call like a scroll. Uh, you know, it's like we have a book, 
But when they were in their day and time, they had the papyri and all that stuff that they wrote stuff with and on, and they would roll it up into a scroll. And so as, as we see this thing, it was a roll <laughs> uh, that, that had uh, writing on it, and, and this writing evidently had some things in it that, uh, that brought a curse. And that's what we see here in verse 3. He said unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. I, I will say this, and I'll give you some verses. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 10, it says this, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Uh, Galatians 3.13, For Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. And it says, Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. So we find that uh, if indeed this role is... Uh, the old law, which I believe personally that it is, I, I find that uh, it being the old law, it became a curse to, to the whole world. <laughs> and one reason why it was a curse for the whole world is that uh, for the things that were in it, nobody could keep all of it. Amen? I mean, nobody could do 100% according to the law. And you say, well, I could do 50% or I could do, you know, 80%. I could do 99%. Let me ask you, husbands in here, what if your wife told you that she was, she was, uh, she was faithful to you 90% of the time? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, it just wouldn't work, would it? <laughs> I mean, it's like a chain. If you had a length of a chain, and, and does it matter which link of that chain would be broken? It wouldn't, would it? <laughs> I mean, if you're hanging from this chain, uh, you know, over an alligator pit, I mean, would it matter which link would break? I mean, before that you would be in trouble? I mean, so the thing of it is, is that's one reason why the law was, was called a curse, is, is because that uh, man could not keep 100% of the law. So there was always an element of faith. There was always an element of grace all the way through the Scripture. Amen. Always there was an element of that. And we won't get into that. But we see that this thing in verse 3, this roll that is flying through the air, amen, uh, it becomes a curse. And as it becomes a curse, the Bible says it's, it's over the face of the whole earth. For one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side, according to it. In other words, what was written on this side of the, the, the roll, it, it becomes a curse. And, and it's to them that stealeth. And then what is written on the other side, every one that sweareth shall be cut off as, as on the side according to it. So uh, on, on both sides of this thing, it was written that, uh, you know, this one that steals and this one that sweareth, I, I mean, it becomes a curse to them. Why? Because... It's a part of God's law <laughs> that they're not supposed to steal. They're not supposed to swear or curse or do those things. Uh, here, here's what Leviticus, the Old Testament, tells the, the Israelites. In Leviticus, in chapter 19 uh, and verse 11, the Bible says, Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. Verse 12, And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord." Let me tell you something. There was two things. There was two things that were uh, pretty uh, evident that God's people did against God. <laughs> uh, they did all kind of things against God, but number one, they stole His glory. Amen. They stole the, the blessings of God. They stole the time of God. They stole those things away from God and, and did not give God glory for that. And the other thing is, 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 is that we see here, uh, they did some other things in that they used God's name falsely. You remember the, uh, the false prophet? Well, he was a prophet of God, but he messed up. Balaam, do you remember that? And how he was trying to curse God's people to gain the, the, the money and gain the riches of Balak. And so uh, we find that he tried to use God's wisdom, God's power, God's glory, and use it falsely. And God said uh, he didn't like that, amen. And so we find that it's, he's, he's allowing this thing to go over and cause judgment to come. If you look in verse number 4, he says this, I will bring it forth, I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, 
and to the house into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. So what we find there that uh, uh, we find that that, that thing is, has has uh, gotten into the home. In other words, what it is is that that judgment. It is, is not going to be, um, and I can't think of the word, but that judgment on God's people, not necessarily uh, the church, because we're already judged at Calvary, amen, uh, for our sin and all that stuff, but uh, I will be judged for our works when we get there. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. But uh, this judgment is going to come back to God's people, and they will have to answer for what they've done with the law of God and, and, and God Almighty Himself. And this thing is going to get into their houses and it's either going to uh, destroy them, amen, or, or it's going to bring them out. And so we find that as we see in this verse here that it's actually going to get in there and it's going to be a curse to them. Because they did not, number one, believe God's word. Number two, they didn't, they didn't believe God. They refused his law and they refused his, himself, amen. And so we find that it's going to come back and they're going to be held accountable for that thing. And so, uh, what is that thing? Well, it's a UFO. I mean, <laughs> what else you going to call it? A flying roll. Amen? <laughs> I mean, it's an unidentified... It's, that's what it is. It's just... But it's, it's a curse. Amen? And so, it's not something that, uh, uh, you know, that, 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 that we read about how that, uh, you know, these people are coming and saying that they, they, they're getting messages from outer space and they're coming here to check on us and make sure we're doing okay and don't blow up the planet with nuclear, you know, bombs and stuff like that and don't kill each other and don't do those things, you know. Uh, they're here to make sure we do things good and do things right and all that good stuff. But uh, that's not what the Bible says. That ain't, that's nowhere near what the Bible says. The Bible says that it's bringing judgment. The Bible says it's a curse, amen. The Bible says it's going to come in and destroy. It's going to be like a sin, like a sin of leprosy. You say, how's that? Well, look at the latter part of verse 4. The Bible says, And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof, and the stones thereof. The Bible says back in Leviticus again, in chapter 14, and ver well, let's just actually go back there. Leviticus, uh, where you get the law, Levitical law, and, uh, and you'll find there that God is giving this law uh, to His people. In Leviticus chapter 14. I want you to notice here and look in verse 43. Leviticus 14, 43. Notice as the Bible says, And if the plague come again and break out in the house after they had taken away the stones, and after they had scraped the house, and after it is plastered, then the priest shall come and look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the house, it is a fretting leprosy in the house. It is unclean. You see that thing? He says, and, it shall break, and he shall break down the house and the stones of it and the timber thereof and all the mortar of the house, and he shall carry them forth out of the city into an unclean place. What is that? It's part of the judgment on God's people. It's part of the judgment of, for them rejecting God and God's law. And it's going to become a, per, a curse, like a curse of leprosy that's going to come around and, and, and it's going to have to be taken out and be destroyed. And that's what he's talking about there. That thing's going to come in. That law's going to come in. However, I mean, you know, uh, that thing flies in. It's going to come in. It's going to come in their house. It's going to, it's going to be a standard for, for, for a judgment. And whenever that thing is there, it, that judgment is going to become a curse. And, and as it becomes that curse, it's going to destroy their home and be taken out for the people and for that place to be destroyed because they rejected God and they rejected His truth of His Word. How's that connected with, uh, with Mystery Babylon? Well, God's going to, and we'll see that here in just a minute, but uh, God's going to use, God's going to use those, uh, those, uh, that, that place over there. He's going to use that, and He's going to use that against His people. Amen. He's going to use it against His people. I want to show you something real quick. Some of you already have seen this, but I just want to show it to you again if I can get to it. Uh, this book here is an amazing book. I don't know if you know that or not. But if you'll look, uh, if you'll look in, uh, in chapter 19 of the book of Luke, how God will use uh, Babylon and, 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 and uh, that, that mystery Babylon, that city, that great city that, that we read about there, 
uh, and how, how this thing happens. Luke chapter 19, I want you to notice this. In verse number 41, Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Familiar passage of Scripture, it says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city, talking about Jesus, and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days, now pay close attention, for the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, compass thee around, around, and keep thee on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Can I tell you that at the Holy Cause with the Jews, uh, there were 10,000 bodies that were destroyed, that they had no place to bury them. And so they did shallow graves, and when they did shallow graves over there, all, to keep those bodies out of sight, they just covered them in those shallow graves and just laid the ground even out there uh, where they were at. Of course, later on, those bodies began to decompose, and when they started to decompose, the bones and the uh, eroding of the, of, the, of the land, they had to pull them back up and bury them, carry them off somewhere and, 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 and dump them in, in deep holes. But I want you to notice this. That it says here in, in, in Luke chapter 19, and, and it says in verse 41, 42, 43, and 44. Amen? Can I ask you this question? Uh, who was it that took the Jews and brought them and, and took them over there to Auschwitz and put them in there? Was it not, uh, uh, was it not Hitler? <laughs> was it not his regime? Yeah. Hitler was a, a Roman Catholic. Right. Hitler hated the Jews. <laughs> Amen? And can I ask you, what were the years that, uh, that this Holocaust went, went, went on? Wasn't it 1941, 42, 43, and 44? <laughs> I mean, this book here has already had the thing time-stamped of what was going to take place and, and how it was going to take place. And, and we know now, looking back in history, that we know who it was that he used. Amen. And there's your mystery Babylon, the connection of how God is going to send forth His, His curse and send forth His Word that's going to be placed there and that law that was placed there that became a curse to His people and, and find that uh, He's going to use them to bring forth that judgment. Isn't that interesting? You say, preacher, you're stretching. I, I, I don't know that I am. It's going to get better, amen? Just hang on. It's going to get better. I want you to keep noticing. Everybody okay? Yeah. I want you to keep noticing this thing as we look at it. And, and look, in, look in verse number, uh, same, same Zechariah. There's only one Zechariah, right? <laughs> same, same book of Zechariah. <laughs> Chapter 5. Amen. And, and I want you to see this thing here. He says there in chapter 5 of Zechariah, chapter number 5, seven, verse 7. And he says, And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. So what is an ephah? Well, it's, it's kind of like a, a basket. It's kind of like a, a, a basket that is used for measuring uh, wheat or measuring some of their, uh, their, their seeds or whatever. And so it's it, in my mind, and, and, and just trying to, it's just a measuring tool. It's a measuring basket, you know. It's kind of like what we would have a bushel basket or something like that, or a gallon bucket, you know. This was an ephah. It, it, was, it, was, it was a measurement. It was a basket for measurement. And so there we find in verse number 7 that there was a talent of lead that, uh, that was there also. And, this is, and, they, and then it says, this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephod. So we find that there's an ephod, there's this basket, and we find that there's a woman that is sitting inside this basket. And we find that as she's sitting in the basket, that there's this big uh, piece of lead. Amen? And that's what it says. There's a talent of lead. And so we'll talk about the lead here in just a few minutes of what this thing is, of what we see that this thing is. But we see that there's a woman sitting there. As we see this woman sitting there, the Bible says in verse number 8, and he said, this is wickedness. Very clear, right? <laughs> this woman sitting in this ephah is, is, is very wicked. 
Now you start to see a little bit of connection of what Revelation 17 is showing, talking about this woman that is in this ephod. I, I, there, there's, uh, you can look back in history and you can look back and I'm not a real big proponent of telling you to look it up on the internet because you can have all kind of garbage. But it is, it is, uh, it is, it is documented proof where these kids have seen these uh, visions of, of, of this woman they call Fatima. Y'all heard of that? Where they say this is Mary floating up out here. Amen. And don't they, don't they, don't they worship the queen of heaven in this thing? <laughs> in Jeremiah 44, they talk about the queen of heaven and they worship her. Amen. And, and, and you know, we see this thing of where that there's this, there's this vision that is given to Zechariah of this woman sitting in this ephah. And, and the Bible clearly says this is wickedness. Amen. Amen. It's wickedness. I'm telling you, whatever they're saying that these per se aliens or whatever these little things are are telling us, you know, uh, what's coming in the future and how we ought to live and how we ought to... I'm telling you, it's wickedness. The bottom line is that it's wickedness. (laughs) And so we find this thing that, uh, as it says there, it is wickedness, and he cast it into the midst of the ephod... And he's ephah, and he's, he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. So we find that the lead is actually a cover for, for covering up that thing. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 and God can do that. God's in control of what we get and what we don't get. God's in control. Listen, I, I know the devil is the god of this world. I know that. Uh, but God is still ultimately in control completely. Amen. He, he, the devil can't do anything without God's approval and without God allowing it to happen. Amen. So we find that that lead, uh, it's kind of weird that there's a piece of metal flying around out there in, in, in the outer space and all that stuff. Amen. It's just crazy, ain't it? Y'all ever heard of that before? Y'all didn't know it was in the Bible, did you? Uh, I can tell you how those things fly. I can tell you exactly how they fly. <laughs> it says here that there's some women with wings. <laughs> Amen. I seen the other day where somebody uh, put up this thing uh, of, of the clouds. It looked like an angel out there. You know, and it, it looked like an angel. And, and here's the scary thing about it is, is, is how many people don't have never seen and had never been told uh, that, a, that an angel is a woman with wings. Right? Everybody's been told that. That's, I mean, if I had a little figurine, that's exactly what it would look like. But if you had a biblical angel, all you'd have is a 33-year-old male standing there. <laughs> that's all you'd have. Right? I mean, but according to this, if you see a woman with wings, that's wicked. Hmm. It kind of makes you wonder about that place over there where Paul and them were running around out there and they was preaching the gospel and that, that lady that was doing the divination and doing all the divine in form and they had their little idols and all that stuff. And Paul started casting out those demons and got those demons out of that lady and out of those other people and, uh, and men started messing up their, uh, their little playhouse. And what were they doing, man? They was making little uh, figurines of Diana and making those little figurines and selling those things and making a living. And boy, that that just caused a stir. I'm telling you, if you you take this book here and you start applying it to the things and, and preaching against the things that are out there in the world and showing what the truth of these things are, that angels are not women and angels don't have wings, amen, and you start teaching and preaching that thing, uh, you're going to blow up some people out there. Why? Because, man, that's how they make their money. And there's a lot of other stuff in here that would blow up too, amen? <laughs> amen. Right. So you see the thing there, that there's the woman sitting in the ephah, and, and notice as you look at this in verse number 9, the Bible says, Then lifted up my eyes, I up my eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women. And the wind was in their wings, and they had wings like wings of a stork, and they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. That's how the thing moved around, <laughs> is these stork-winged women. <laughs> Amen. The stork was one of the unclean birds that, uh, uh, that God told Israelites don't mess with. It was an unclean bird. It was an unclean fowl. It was one of those things that uh, God says it's an abomination for you to partake or eat of that thing. And you can, you can read about that back in the Old Testament in Leviticus chapter 11. Uh, it tells you that thing. Uh, and so uh, you've you got this picture here. You got this picture of this lead weight. You got a picture of this basket here, an ephod, a measuring basket, and you've got a picture of a woman sitting inside of it. 
And then you've got two other women with wings flying that thing around out there. And the Bible calls it what? Wickedness. You know what all this stuff is flying around out there? <laughs> it's wickedness. <laughs> It's wickedness, and I, I don't have time to really go into a lot of the stuff that, that I feel like it, 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 it is, is connected, but, but I'm telling you folks, uh, if you just keep your eyes in the book, you keep your eyes in the book, keep your mind straight, when you hear things like this, God's going to connect it, and He's going to show you uh, that what they're telling you is not true. What they're telling you and what they're telling our kids and what they're doing this and, and all, it is not what the Bible says. And we, fee, we, we find here that, uh, that uh, these two women, they had, they had wind uh, that was in their wings and they had wings like the wings of a stork. And the Bible says they lifted up the ephod between uh, the earth and the heavens. So we know that this thing's flying around out there. We know that it is. Amen. So you got this, you got this metallic lead piece flying around out there, and you got this woman that's appearing to these, these kids and to these people that they're calling miracles that's giving them messages about how to live and, and what they ought to be doing. Amen. It's crazy. It's crazy. But that's, that's what they're telling you out there. And listen, you can call me crazy, but it ain't nowhere near as crazy as what they're trying to tell everybody. Amen. I got proof here of what it's telling me. Had a guy one time, and uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, just the way Southerners talk, you know, uh, bless his heart. <laughs> he tried to tell me one time that uh, you know the Bible speaks about you know angels, and women, and angels and, and wings and stuff like that. And he said, and he said, what about that in Zechariah chapter five? And I looked at him in surprise. I'm like. Yeah, well, you know, he said, he said, those were women with wings there. And then I come back and I said, look, guy, I said, uh, I said, man, that Bible calls that wicked. I said, that ain't no angels. That ain't no angels. I said, that ain't, that ain't, you, you don't, that ain't angels. Right. <laughs> the Bible called them wicked. I said, if you want to trust that and you want to believe in that and you want to do that, you have at it. But I'm just telling you, my Bible says you don't need to mess with that stuff. It's wicked. Just like that, that, that flying roll that come into the house, it's a curse. Amen. So he says this thing, he says they lift up that thing between earth and, and the heaven. I, I'm just going to ask you this question. Who do you think this is? <laughs> it is Satan. He's the one pushing it, but who do you think this woman is? <laughs> what do you think? Man, don't you think he's got something tied to, to, to this mystery of Babylon, this woman that's flying around, that they're worshiping as the queen of the heaven and all this stuff? Why, why would they call her the queen of the heaven? Why, why would they call her Fatima and all that stuff and look at this and, and, and Mary's uh, uh, shown herself to them? I mean, uh, I mean, the devil, listen, listen, the devil knows this book better than any of us. He's had a long time to study on this thing. You know, I read in my Bible that when Jesus walked up to the uh, demoniac uh, over there in Gadara, Mark chapter number 5, I read about that thing where the man, where the, where the, where the, where the man was there and, and, and the unclean spirit started talking to Jesus saying, hey, uh, we know who you are. <laughs> don't, don't cast us out. Our time ain't come, you know, so what did he do? He allowed him to go into pigs over there and they run off into the water and they choked themselves. But, but what is my point in saying that? Well, my point in saying that is, is, is they know who Jesus is. They believe in who God is and who Jesus is. The problem is, is half the church don't. Amen. Half the church don't. And I'd say over half the church. And, and, and so half the church is not reading their Bible and not studying of what the Bible says. So we find this thing. You know, I talked about Revelation. And I said Revelation is really not that hard to understand. It's just hard to believe sometimes. And when you start looking at this, it just gets to where it's, man, it's, it's hard to believe. Listen, if you'd read this thing 30 years ago... And, and, and saw this thing about this wings and these things flying around, somebody told you it's a UFO, man, you'd be laughed out of the county. You'd be, I mean, you'd be hung up somewhere. I'd be losing my, my job as, and position as a pastor. I done lost it. But now look at the headlines in the news. Now look what's going on out there. Amen? You don't think that book's got it pegged? Man. That's just like over in Revelation chapter 11 over there. What do you find? You find those two witnesses that's been killed, and, and we've talked about it before, but they've been killed. And I remember even as a kid, 
I don't know if most of y'all youngins in here know it or not, but the Internet's not always been around. Right? <laughs> Satellite TV has not always been around. <laughs> When I was a kid, uh, you know, there was only, what, three channels on the TV? <laughs> that was it. And at 12 o'clock, you had a, you, or a 10 teal or something like that, you had this guy in the United States Air Force jet flying across through there, and, and he starts to talk about this thing, and he's flying, and he's saying, I can't remember the whole thing, but part of the thing is, is he's flying through there in the, in the sky, and he's touching the face of God. Y'all remember that? And then what was the next program? <laughs> that was it. It was off the air. Amen. I remember when they started going 24-hour news feeds, and I'm thinking, man, there's not that much news. And if there's not that much news, they have to make it up. And I remember being a kid thinking that. I, I mean, you know, I'm not the brightest bulb in the pack, amen, but I, I figured some things out. There it is. There's this woman... And, and she's sitting inside the ephod, and, 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 and boy, there's a lead top on this thing. And, 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 and then, there's, then there's these wicked uh, beings and creatures that are, that are flying, flying her off. How can we connect that to Revelation 17? Well, I tell you, the best way we can do this is keep reading. Amen? Look in verse number 10. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, whether do these bear the ephod? Where are you carrying this woman? Where are they carrying this woman and this ephod? Well, here's what he says in verse 11. And he said unto me, To build it in house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. That's pretty interesting there. You know, Brother Randy over there works on the arsenal, and that's an army base. That's where the army comes together. Amen? Uh, they have another place up here in Tullahoma. Uh, what's the name of that place? Anybody? Arnold. Arnold. Hey, Arnold! No, that's wrong, Arnold. Sorry. That, that, that was an Arnold base up there. Amen? And what, that's, where they, that's where they're getting their, their information. That's where they're based out of. That's where they fly in. That's where they fly out. Pensacola down there, they have an Eglin Air Force base. Amen. Uh, they have in Pensacola, they have the air base down there. Amen. Uh, you know, and, and, and so over in Lejeune, at Camp Lejeune in, in North Carolina, they have the military, the, the Marine base, their boot camp and all that stuff. And that's where they're, they're, they're stationed. That's where they're uh, 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 supposed to stay. That's where they're based out of. And that's where they fly in. That's where they fly out. That's where they're at. So here's this ephah and these two winged wicked women... You can't preach this everywhere. <laughs> but there's these two winged wicked women that are carrying this ephod with this woman in there, and they're carrying it off to build it a house in the land of Shinar, which is going to be her base, where they're going to fly in and out of. So still, what's the connection? Ah, glad you asked. Let's go to Genesis. Go to Genesis. And let's see what the land of Shinar is. How about that? Let's see what Shinar is. Go to Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10. Is this helping you? Does this make sense? I, I, just, I don't want to go off the rails. You say, too late, preacher. <laughs> Genesis chapter 10. Notice in verse number 8. Well, first of all, look in verse 6. Genesis 10, verse 6. And the sons of Ham. All right, now we know who Ham is, right? He is the, the, the son of Noah that his offspring is cursed. Right? The Canaanites and all those. And so let's look at this. This is one of the sons of Ham. Look in verse 8. And Cush beget Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore he is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was what? Babel. And Erech and Akkad and Kelne in the land of Shinar. So very clearly the Bible teaches us <laughs> that in the land of Shinar 
is in Babylon. Look in chapter 11, Genesis chapter 11. And we'll read a few verses here, and, uh, and you'll get some more of the picture. And the whole earth, verse 1, was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. You see what's happening here. You know the story. We see that there's a group of people that think they don't need God. They are their own masters, they are their own builders, they are their own people, and they think they can reach heaven by their own way. They don't need God. So it says in verse 5, And the Lord came down to, this, to see the city. Notice that it is connected to a city. Amen? Uh, we find not only is it to a city, but a tower. And he says there, which the children of men build it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So he says, Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad, and he says, From thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. Babel. Babel was short for Babylon. Amen? And so we find that Shinar, when you go back to Zechariah chapter 5, Zechariah chapter 5, let's read verse 11 again, verse 10 and 11 again, and see if it doesn't get a little clearer for you. He says in verse 10 of Zechariah 5, Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephah? Verse 11, and he said unto me to build it and house in the land of Shinar. Is that what your Bible says? So they're flying this, this ephah over there to the land of Shinar, which is in Babylon. What's in Babylon? Well, we find that's the Vatican City. We find that's the, uh, that's the uh, Revelation 17, 3 through 5, the mystery Babylon, the, the, the mother of harlots over there. That's, we find that the connection is there. That's the city. And what they're doing to build in a house in the land of Shinar. In other words, that's where it's going to be. It shall be established, the Bible says, and set there upon her own base. You want to know where the wickedness and stuff is really coming from? <laughs> The land of Shinar. <laughs> Amen. That stuff is flying in and out from over there. You say, are you saying that the UFOs originated? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am going to show you, what I am going to tell you, you have to look up for yourself in some of these cases because I, I did not have, uh, have the access to get some of the information. But I have read it in the past. I want you to notice if you'll go... Uh, let's see. I want you to go back to Daniel... Save your place in Zechariah. Go to Daniel chapter 11. But I will, I will tell you, there's a connection there. There's a connection there. And I'll give you that information. You can look up for yourself when you have the opportunity to do it. And you can just come back and say, Preacher, you lied to me. Or you can come back and say, Preacher, you told me the truth. One or the other. I'm going to let you decide. But I want you to notice in Daniel chapter 11... It looks like that Mystery Babylon has some alien ties. And we know that aliens are not necessarily little green men or little greys or anything like that. What the Bible calls aliens is, is just like you and I were called aliens at one time. We were aliens because we were not a part of the commonwealth of Israel. In other words, we were outside of that, of that group, Amen. And so just because, I mean, if you come, if you come to, uh, to Fayetteville and you're from Kentucky, then you're an alien to Tennessee. <laughs> Amen? You're not from Tennessee. <laughs> so, so when we say those words aliens and use those terms, the news media has, has, has already, already uh, brainwashed people to think that that's what you're talking about is little green men and little greys running around and all that stuff. But that ain't Bible talk. That's not Bible talk. People watch too much TV. 
Amen. They watch too much YouTube and watch too much of... Hey, listen, I, this, the headlines this past week, y'all know I have to use the computer on my job and stuff. I don't read these things. I read the headlines. And some of the goofiest headlines I've ever seen, they're, they're already saying what to do. I just read the headline. I don't know what you're supposed to do, but what to do in case of an alien invasion. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, uh, Orville Wells, what's his name? Orville Wells, ain't that his name? Man, he, 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 uh, that guy that did the, 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 the city, what was it, the, uh, uh, what's that move? not the thing, but the, uh, the, the radio program where he did the uh, alien thing. Orson Wells, I was close, Orville, amen. I got the Wells part right. <laughs> But there was Orson Welles. He did that thing. I mean, you know, and, and people were going nuts. They thought there was an actual invasion. And that's what people, man, they're watching that stuff. They're looking at that stuff and they're thinking, man, it's just people going nuts. But it looks like Babylon. It looks like the Vatican City. It looks like that, that they're going to, they're gonna, in the end times, they're going to have some ties to some of these, per se, UFO alien type wickedness. And they already do. <laughs> They already have. They're going to be a big part of that thing, and, 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 and part of the takeover is going to happen, of course, when, when the rapture takes place. Because your Bible believers are going to be gone. Amen. They're going to be gone. And so, and so they're going to lie to the people, and when they lie to the people, the people are going to take what they tell them, just like they did in the past, and just like they're doing to some people now. Uh, they're going to take what they're teaching them, because what they're teaching them is, you don't need a Bible, I'm your God, I will tell you what it says. Amen. That's the reason why in the 1500s that uh, they took them out over there and, and, and tied them to a stake and burned them alive if they found them with a Bible. It's because they knew the Bible had the truth. <laughs> and they didn't want the people to have the truth. And so we find that uh, uh, they're going to they're gonna have this thing. And, and the reason why that they're in contact, and this is where it's getting a little bit strange and weird, <laughs> like it hadn't been already, amen. But, but we see that uh, they're, they're in contact with some of this stuff and some of this wickedness and, and all of that. And, and when the rapture takes place, of course, the mothership comes down and gets all of us out of here, right? <laughs> I mean, well, they've been saying that for years. And there's going to be, you know what's going to happen is, is there's going to be a covenant made with Israel, with the Antichrist, and that covenant is going to be a covenant of peace. What do you think they're doing right now over there with the Palestinians and also with Israel over there in Jerusalem? They're fighting right now, and every United States president that's been in place for the last 30, 40 years has, has went into to office saying he's going to bring peace to the east. And they're not going to have peace in the east until the Lord comes back. And so they're fighting over that thing right now, and, they're, and, 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 and the Antichrist is going to come in, and, and boy, he's going to bring in peace. And I'll show you that in a minute. But it's going to be a false peace. It's going to be a temporary peace. And we know that covenant's going to be broken about midway through that tribulation. Daniel chapter 11, I want you to see a couple of verses. We won't read a lot. The whole chapter is amazing. But you look in verse number 36, the Bible says this, And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself, and magnify himself above every god. Doesn't that sound like a pope? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean he, he sets himself up in that thing just like he's God. It's cathedral. He is sitting in the place of God. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation uh, be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done. It's going to happen, amen? And, and, it, and it's, gonna, it's just going to, it's determined, and so it's going to be done. Verse 37, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, uh, for he shall magnify himself above all. Uh, you, can, you can read into that what you want to, and, 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 but we're not looking at any of that part tonight, except that he's not going to regard uh, any of, uh, uh, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. He's going to be part Jew. He's going to have some Jewish blood in him. But notice in verse number uh, 38, the Bible says, But his estate shall, be, uh, shall he honor uh, the God of forces, and a God of whom his fathers knew uh, not shall be honored with gold and silver, with precious stones and pleasant things. <laughs> couple of things in that. Daniel chapter 5 talks about uh, uh, King uh, uh, Belteshazzar. Do you remember we preached on that not long ago? Where, where that they were honoring the God of gold and silver and all that stuff. And then here comes the handwriting on the wall. 
But look in verse number 37 there, or verse 38, where he says he's not, he's, he, his estate shall he honor uh, the God of forces. The God of forces? Anybody ever heard this statement? The force be with you. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> Amen? Where'd that come from? Well, they made a movie, they made a bunch of movies called Star Wars. It makes you wonder. Makes you wonder, why, why are they worried about what's going on out there? Why would the Vatican, why would, why would they worry about what's flying around out there? And why would they want to have any kind of contact with all that stuff? Y'all wonder? <laughs> I wonder too. <laughs> Let's look at something here. <laughs> look in Daniel chapter 12. I'm not going to leave you hanging. We'll, we'll catch up. Daniel chapter 12. Notice in Daniel chapter 12, he says in verse number 9, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. That's an interesting, that's an interesting verse. It's closed until the time of the end. Can y'all not see this thing opening up? So if it's closed to the time of the end, and we're seeing it open up, guess where we're at? He says, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. Amen. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And notice, and from that time, from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So we find there that something's going to happen midway through the tribulation. When this Antichrist is going to break that covenant of peace with Israel. And he's got, that's when that abomination of desolation is going to be seen there, sitting on the throne, taking the place of God. So what's the connection? Why, why, why are they looking at this stuff, and why have they got this connection over there with this stuff flying around, like this, this uh, Zechariah 5, uh, with this lady sitting in the ephod, and, and, and these wickedness uh, flying around, carrying her over there to Shinar, where it's, that's, gonna, that's, that's the home base. Why would they be doing that? Can I tell you, can I tell you that, that the Catholic Church, can I tell you Babylon... Can I tell you the mystery of Babylon, this great city, this harlot, can I tell you they don't want the Lord to come back. They don't want the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you know what they're doing? They're doing two things. They're, they're, they're controlling some of this stuff, and, and as they're controlling some of this stuff, they're receiving and they're working, and you'll see in a minute, they're working with messages and working with, with revelations and all that stuff of what's coming around in the sky, and they're watching. They're watching what's going on out there. Why? Because they want their Christ to sit on the throne. They want their Christ to be ruling this earth. Right? And who is their Christ? Well, it's Satan. And so if they can be looking at the stars and having all this information and having all this stuff and have a privy to it, they think, they think they can get ahead of the thing. And Star Wars, they can take care of them if they see them coming back. You're saying, preacher, you just lost it. <laughs> you just lost it. Ah, maybe I have. Maybe I have. But that's why they're watching the skies. They're looking for their Redeemer, which actually turns out to be the Antichrist, Revelation chapter 6, amen. He's got to come from the sky. Why? Because the Lord's coming back from the sky. He's got to be on a white horse. Why? Because the Lord's coming back on a white horse. <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, he's going to look a lot like him. I mean, you're not going to be able to tell if you ain't got a good King James Bible. <laughs> Why? So, so that he can, he can, he's the great deceiver, so he can deceive everybody. Yeah. He's got to be. Got to be. Look just like him, just about. I mean, just, just almost. He's got to get wounded, and he's got to die, and he's got to come back. Revelation 13. All these things. And they're going to worship him. They're going to worship him. So if they can keep, they can keep the real Lord coming, from coming back, which is preposterous, amen. It's just crazy. There ain't no way they can keep him from coming back. I mean, it's just like them, uh, 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 you know, uh, sealing up the east, east wall over there, the gate. Yeah, it's just crazy, amen. 
That's just idiotic. It ain't going to stop him. I mean, you know, didn't he show up in the, in the room with the disciples <laughs> without going, busting through a door? I mean, you know, anybody with a good King James Bible, amen, can figure this stuff out. <laughs> but there, there it is. And let me ask you, if, you, if you'll do this, I, I just didn't have time to get all this stuff together for, for that, but you have time, you look up, you look up uh, Graham, or Mount Graham, in Arizona. And what you'll find over there is, is this. You'll find the world's largest telescope. Has anybody ever heard of this? The world's largest telescope. They call it Lucy, which is short for Lucifer. <laughs> and guess who, guess who owns uh, a part of this telescope and has, uh, has uh, uh, ties to all this stuff? <laughs> I'm just telling you folks you ain't going to beat this book you're not going to beat this book and they think they got something over on God they're going to stop God they're going to stop the Lord coming back and all this stuff the God of forces and Star Wars and all this stuff are you kidding me they ain't going to stop it I can tell you this I'm glad I'm on the winning side I am glad I'm on the winning side I, you know, I've never seen, and, and some of you kids, and I know, I know a bunch of you have watched it, and I don't care if you watch it or not, but you need to pay attention. I've never seen Star Wars. Even when it came out, I never even cared when I was a kid. I think I was in the, I don't know when it came out, the 70s or something when the first one came out. I never, I just, it didn't, it didn't crank my tractor. <laughs> I never did, you know, and I still, you know, don't care a whole lot about it. But, but little, little do, did we know then about some of that stuff to where it's turned into now. And then we can see these things in God's Word where God already had it figured out. Well, it never did stump Him anyway, <laughs> you know. But I can tell you, working with the Department of Defense and some of the things that we've dealt with, they have various missiles that they, that they design to shoot. They're, right now they're working on supersonic stuff. Where, I mean, it's just majorly fast and can travel farther, travel higher, travel faster. And, and that's part of the interceptors and some of those things in the THAAD program that Lockheed Martin deals with. And what are those part of? Those are part of the incoming to where that you could, they, they could be able to shoot up there to where that they could get some of the missiles from the enemy. But can I tell you this? It's not just for the missiles of the enemy. They think they can shoot our Savior out of the sky. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they think that they can head this stuff off. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. So, what's the connection? I mean, connection is we know that, uh, that it's wicked. Connection is, is we know that it's deceptive. Connection is, is we know where it's at. We know where the home base is at. That's what the Bible says. They're going to build a house over there, and that's where the, the base is going to be. And that's what the Vatican owns, that thing out there in Arizona, to where that they have Jesuit priests that are watching over some of that stuff. And if you read the right article, you'll find that they even talked about how that they have even spoke with aliens and talked with them on a regular basis. Now, do they? I don't know. I don't know if they do or not, but they say they do. But I can tell you what that is. It's wicked. It's all wicked. <laughs> Amen? And one of these days, the Lord's going to shut all that stuff down, and, uh, and, and it'll be over. It'll be over. We're going to win. <laughs> I mean, we're going to win. But the, devil's gonna, the devil does all this stuff so that he can wow people. It shows his power, it shows, and he's powerful. And to show his strength and his wisdom, he's very wise. But at the same time, he's very foolish. And I say that under the protection of my Savior, amen. amen. I don't want to get the devil in here on anybody. But I'm, I'm just saying, under the protection of my dear Savior and the blood that he shed for me, it's a foolish thing because he'll never, never, never overcome our Savior and our God. Amen. Never, never happen. Isn't it good to be saved? Amen. Amen. Good to be saved. Well, that's all I got. Just uh